Fujifilm has been known for their film simulations that are built into their cameras since the launch of the X-Series with the original X100. Fast forward over a decade and now there's a massive community of people that are using these cameras and not only that, they're creating and sharing their own recipes based off of these film simulations and they're relying entirely on the JPEG files that are produced in camera. All of the years that I've been shooting with Fujifilm cameras off and on since the original X100 was released, I have never shot JPEG with these. I've always just shot RAW and relied on post-processing, and the idea of shooting JPEG and limiting sort of the flexibility of that file has never been appealing to me. But so many of you left comments and messages on recent videos about the X100 that I really need to try out these new film recipes. So that's exactly what I did. So big shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you need a website, go to squarespace.com slash mattday. Let's see these JPEGs. Bring out the JPEGs. Can I get a JPEG in here? So all of those photos were just straight out of camera JPEGs produced in camera, just imported into my MacBook, that is it. So these film recipes that people are always talking about, these are all thanks to Fuji X Weekly. I don't know Richie, we've never spoke, but it's a beautiful thing he's done here, making these little custom recipes and then sharing them for people to use and customize their own. I went ahead and set up a few different color profiles in my camera just to try it out, although I haven't done a ton of testing yet. I spent one morning walking along the trails at the Hopewell Mound Group here in Chillicothe, and I just chose the Ultramax 400 recipe just because it's a film I love and used as a teenager when I was learning how the camera worked. Now as for all the black and white photos, the only film recipe that I've tried for black and white is HP5, no surprise there. And I know that these are meant to resemble certain film stocks, that's the idea behind most of them on the Fuji X Weekly website, it's so that you get a similar look from your favorite film stock, and a lot of people are treating this as sort of like either a way to accompany shooting film, you know, using a camera like this with the JPEG, some people are doing it just to sort of scratch that film itch, uh, treating this like a film camera basically. And as far as like matching a film stock and actually looking like film to be honest that's like not anything I'm concerned about with this I'm not matching these files next to a film scan in some sort of edit so I don't really have any reason to try and make sure it looks exactly like that particular film stock as long as it looks good that's really all I'm interested in and in my opinion these recipes as opposed to just using the standard built-in JPEG film recipes film simulations, I should say. Um, I think these recipes, like further tweaking things and just using that, if you're gonna shoot JPEG, this is really the way to go in my opinion because you're getting a much more like dialed in look and you have so much more room to like fine tune things. I may never touch the raw files, I might rely entirely on the JPEGs for a lot of this camera's use, especially just personal stuff with the family and I just wanna have a photo so I can print it and put it up on the wall or the fridge. If it looks good, then yeah, of course. And these to me, I think they look great for that kind of use. The idea of keeping a raw file so that if I ever need the raw file if I want to change up the edit or maybe I shot something with you know the black and white recipe and I want to change it to color later I like having the option but the way I've gone about using this over the last month basically once a week I will throw my card into the camera and then I'll just drag all of the raw files to a folder and then I'll drag all of the JPEGs to a folder that way I have everything separate but everything is getting backed up onto other hard drives I've got other copies um, it is really 
really convenient though just having something that's ready to go for most uses. Now if I could only shoot RAW or JPEG and not both of them together, I would shoot RAW just because I know that that's going to give me the most flexibility and I would deal with the fact that I'm always going to have to open up the photo in post to edit things and get it to where I want it to be. But that's what I've always done and so I'm used to that. I can't lie that the first time I imported this into my computer and I just grabbed a few JPEGs and opened them up, I was like, oh, that's that's good enough. That's plenty good enough for most uses when I'm using a camera like this, just grabbing quick photos throughout the day of the family and anything I happen to see. Less friction in my day to day and as I'm working, that's something that I've been really leaning into a lot lately. And uh, especially with this camera, using the JPEG straight out of the camera, that really just embraces that whole mentality. And I, like I said, I know a lot of people rely entirely on just the JPEGs, they're never shooting raw. And uh, for a lot of people, I think that's probably more than enough. That being said, I'm still gonna keep all of my raw files nice and tidy and organized, backed up on multiple drives, just to be safe. Before we wrap things up, I want to take a minute to pay some bills, thank our sponsor Squarespace who have been supporting this channel for many years now, and if you need a website, there is no better place to make one. When I launched mattdayphoto.com, this was years before they ever sponsored this channel, and I went with Squarespace because it was just a no-brainer. No matter what you need, everything is built right into Squarespace's service, so you can show off your portfolio, run an online store, send out an email newsletter, everything you need is in one place. Not only that, it's incredibly easy to select a template that works for you and then further customize that to suit your own needs and the look you're going for with your business or brand. Of course, as easy as everything is, Squarespace is there to help with 24-7 award-winning customer service, so if you ever need help with anything, just give them a shout. Go ahead and check it out at squarespace.com, but when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash mattday. That'll get you 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you again to Squarespace for all of their support here on the channel. I'm gonna continue trying out some different film recipes. Molly also has one loaded up on her X100V and we thought about doing a video together. Uh, if you'd like to see something like that, definitely let me know, but that's it for today. Um, thank you all so, so much for sticking with me this summer. It's been really crazy. There's been a lot going on and uh, <laughs> especially on days when I need it, you guys are always there and I really do appreciate you. So if there's anything, any questions, any ideas you have, anything you'd like to say, let's keep the conversation going in the comments down below. I love you all very, very much. I'll see you guys soon.